as I continue my duties here in the fourth circle of hell while I'm not torturing souls or giving them weird tasks to do for the rest of their lives. It's one of those days where I get to my reincarnation fancies. This time I ended up in some cheesy 80s slasher flick with tentacles. And no, it's nothing hentai related. Moving on, since we're technically controlling every character, even the killer himself, it would only make sense to reincarnate myself as the most important job of all. And it gives me a reason to do some shoddy voice acting. But let us not wait to start our chilling journey in a decrepit home that looks like it hasn't been maintained for years by the state of it. You can even smell the mold through the screen. Yes. I would serve you. And that's what I call S-tier voice acting. That deserves its own Oscar award. And he teleports to all the students that are like, you know. And we get a brief origin lore of this monstrosity. Yes, yes. My cons costume is almost finished. I was still so much more ice cream with this costume. What kid doesn't love a clown? Also, I did not realize that this was normal Teddy. Yet I gave him some sort of Eastern European accent. What was that? It sounded like he was right outside. Is he going to drove splash black? Flash black flash flash back <laughs> Yep, the reason why Teddy goes on these sprees because he got sucked by a creature like alien and now he must abide by this monster's bidding. So we did just that, do some elaborate puzzles around the house in order to grab our saw and mask. I guess you could say that Teddy still has some form of morality or humanity in him. I mean, why else would he have these elaborate puzzles around the house? I'd probably give up at that point. <laughs> And apparently this is Palpatine's third life after that poorly written fan fiction. I guess we'll just go ahead and call them Squid Palpatine based on this eldritch horror. Bring me the rotting flesh of the ground. I must feast. As Teddy, I mean Teddy, feeds the squid his daily bread, he goes on and does his bidding. Which brings us to a normal couple's house. I mean, Teddy definitely will not be here, obviously. It's too obvious, right? Teddy has struck again. The partial remains of two adult individuals were found earlier tonight, keeping the residents of Oakhart on edge and in constant fear. Police have released a press statement saying they have no leads in the search for Teddy, but warned that he tends to forget, tends to target couples and families. A curfew has been implemented. Residents are advised to stay indoors at night and make sure all windows and doors are locked. Contact Oakhart Police Department at once if you have any information about Teddy's location or notice any suspicious behavior. God, that sends a shiver up my spine. Fine. They need to stop that monster before he hurts anyone else. Well, don't worry about it, babe. No idiot dressed as a clown is gonna hurt you as long as I'm around. <sighs> Just remember to do the dishes, okay? You forgot to do it earlier. With the couple doing things like complaining that he needs to do the dishes while she takes a shower. Again, typical couple things. I really don't know. I'm just a demon on the internet fascinated by the mundane lives of humans. I'm shocked that police haven't found that maniac yet. In any case, I should have checked my gun case upstairs and make sure my handgun is working in order. But Tyler doing a quick check on his gun case to make sure it's in order. He remembered last minute that he had to do the dishes. Oh no, it's like making me fuck. Mm, that's strange. Could have sworn this window's closed. Oh. Fuck you, Teddy. Even though it sounds like fucking Teddy. Well done. I should grab that trash down in the basement and take it out. He gonna die. Alright, let's get rid of this trash. What the? Oh, fuck! Oh, well, that ended well for Tyler, but with the power cutting out, we are now switched to our heroine, Ashley, freaking out mid-shower. Tyler, the power's out! Tyler? And in instinct, she has to search for Tyler, because it's what a good girlfriend would do, I guess.
she gonna die. We're just like leading her to her death. What the hell? Where are you, Tyler? Tyler, oh my God. 30 years of trauma and forever needs a therapist from here on. I have to call the police. Oh, car police department. What's your emergency? Please, you you have to get to my house. Teddy is here and he just murdered my boyfriend. Ma'am, please remain calm. I need you to tell me where you where you live. 1428 West Haven Street. You have to get here quickly. I don't know where he is. Listen to me carefully. Find somewhere safe to hide. If you can arm yourself, help is on the way. <laughs> To be honest, I did not expect that, or rather, did not even think to move our character Ashley. So we try again this time, running towards the room and hiding behind the closet. And as Tiddy fails to find her, or find us, we went downstairs, grabbed the key off of Tyler's body. But Tyler, we barely knew you. And now it's payback. Alright, bastard. <laughs> Come and get me. <laughs> I think you should run. After that ordeal was done, we get none other than the mutterings of the police in relief that Tiddy is gone. I mean Teddy. I swear they did this intentionally. Is he really dead? Oh, it's him, all right. Jeez, I can't believe that young man took him down. That young woman took him down. <laughs> I misread that. Sarah took her down to the station to get a full account of what happened here. At least so Cart will sleep a little easier knowing that that maniac is dead. Although we know this isn't over because it's never over in regards to slasher films. And as the thunderbolt hits, the grave of Teddy revives his corpse as he runs off into the night. I guess no rest for the wicked, they say. Whatever the hell that means. And with the non-surprising news of the Teddy monster alive, we are brought to the station. Tonight is the one year anniversary when the local resident Ashley Lawrence put an end to the serial killer Teddy's terrifying reign of terror in Oakhart. Locals conducted a memorial service earlier in honor of Teddy's victims, and while the killer is dead, his crimes will not be forgotten. I can't believe it. It's already been a year. I know, it's insane. No, Ashley, it's up at Camp Oakhart right now. She signed up to be a counselor this year. I think it'll be good for her. That poor girl. No one should have to go through what she did. Anyways, I'll ask Hadley to head up there and help you clear that tree. Thanks, Sarah. Finding out where Ashley ended up. This doesn't spell good news in the future. Force shadowing aside, Sarah went up to Hadley and apparently needs to talk to Ace. Hey, Ace. You need to see me? Yeah, Sarah. I was just on the radio with Sheriff Russell. He needs you to grab the supply key from his office and clean the shower room. What? Why me? Where's the janitor? Apparently he's sick. Can't make it tonight. And I know it stinks, but someone has to do it. Bummer. All right, I'll get it right onto it. Sarah finding out that she's on janitor duty. Since the janitor decides to quote unquote be sick, she grabs her necessary items and heads towards the locker room. She's gonna die. And it seems like this whole precinct has a pretty good vibe going. It's like I got a sense of each and everybody's character. Damn it. I told Eric to replace the light bulbs in here. And who left all these showers on? Somebody's playing a trick on me. Oh sh**. Die. Sarah died, obviously. Never mind. Uh, I guess everyone dies. I realize from here on is better not to get too attached to these people. Man, I sure could go for a bite to eat. Oh my gosh, bear claw is my favorite. Better not have too much. These pants barely fit me anymore. I'd better just have a sandwich instead. Let's see, um, lettuce, ham, cheese, some milk. They gonna die. Okay. <laughs> Just took a part of his brain out, dang. Looks like break time's over. Better start working on Hadley's cruiser. Dang. Now I just need my tools. Toolbox, screwdriver, ass cam, and a wrench. Winch! 
Oh, no. Ellie, is that you? I'm still working on the cruiser. Mind rolling one of the tires over there? Nope. Oh, yep. That was easy. After we witnessed the demise of every subordinate in this precinct, we are now left with Ace. Let's hope he survived this one. What the hell was that? Sound like an animal screaming. I should check it out and hope that he would counteract this stereotype that every dark skin color individual tends to die. I don't make up the rules. He slash afflicts does. Is that blood? Oh god! Hadley! Who the hell did this to you? I need to find Eric and Sarah and get the, to the armory now. I need to find Sarah. I should check the locker room. She's dead. She got her heart eaten out. Sarah, not you too. Make that bastard pay. Need to check the garage and see if Eric is still alive. Crap. Is that Eric? What a mess. After finding the demise of every subordinate under Ace, we now have to make our stand right here. And based on this lone propane, we have to time our shot. What the hell is this symbol? Ah, damn it. We'll pretend that we did not witness that and rather get to the part that we did get it. Okay, make sure he goes. What was that thing? It looks like Teddy. I need to get back to dispatch room and radio sheriff. He needs to know what's happening here. In shock of all that happened, the only thing that Ace could do is report to Chief Russell. He definitely is gonna survive this. Sheriff Russell, come in Sheriff Russell, it's Ace. This is Sheriff Russell. Go ahead Ace. Sheriff Russell, they're all dead Sheriff. Every everyone, Teddy's back. He is back. No, no not you Ace. No! What are you talking about, Ace? Was that gunshot? Ace, come in. Ace. Never mind, I take that back. He dies just like everybody else. I guess he's not an ace in the hole. Ah, uh, as the. Eddie, you failed me, but I have found a perfect way. The mask has fused with you, allowing you to serve again, but it yearns for a new host. The girl who killed you, the mask calls her. Leave her to me. After witnessing vomiting at its finest, you could say this is the beginning of a new. We switch to Buck Scout Beaver's perspective, telling Lisa on the other end that they'll be stuck there for the meantime. Come in, Camp Card. Come in. This is Scout Master Beaver. Hey, a Beaver. This is Lily. What's up? It's good to hear from you, Lily. I'm just reaching out to let you know that the road to the camp is blocked. Officer Hadley and I have plans to head there in the morning to clear the road. Unfortunately, you guys are stuck there until then. Oh wow, it must be the storm. Well, thanks for reaching out. I'll go and let the rest of the counselors know right now. As their conversation was done, we now have to feed his dog, Max. Oh. Hey there, buddy. Who's a good boy? Let's get you fed, Max. And grab some firewood. And that's what Han Solo says. I got a bad feeling about this. Okay, here, just, just right here in the middle of nowhere. Just in the middle of fucking nowhere. Just, we're just there conveniently stacked. Oh, he's gonna die. Teddy, Teddy's right behind him. No? No, I'm not gonna kill the damn dog. No, we're not killing the dog. Why am I gonna kill it? Why? That's not cool. I don't want to kill a dog. So despite my disposition of taking such an action, I knew what I had to do to proceed on with the story. No. After the deed was done, it was giving me strange flashbacks for another game that I had to do something similar. It's not like Max yelping. I need to check on him. So with the cries of Max yelping, Beaver decides to check on him. Though it seems like Max is sort of alive. I guess it's something good. I guess. Who did this to you? Dude, your dog's dead. He can't talk back. What the? Max, no! My arm! So, let's pause for a minute. So we got not just only an 80s horror flick here. We add Eldritch monstrosity and zombies. Well, this is different. I'm not really complaining, to be honest. Okay, I guess he did that. That's better than him dying, I guess. Cart PD, come in, Ace Hadley. Anyone, please, I need help. Oh, he's gonna turn into, like, a zombie then. Oh, well, look at that.
back at the precinct. We now have Russell, and for some reason I gave him a southern accent. I think I was going for something along the lines of Boomhauer from King of the Hill. Just less rednecky. What the hell happened here? I need to get dispatched from a fine ace and the others. Oh sh! They turn into zombies. What the hell is that slime? Hello? Who's that? Why are you running? Can barely make him out. I think that was Sarah. So we couldn't proceed past the tentacle monster, meaning we have to find another way. But as we delve deep, we see none other than our former colleague, Hadley. I try my best to roll and dodge this mechanic, but failed so miserably, even in pixel form. And because of this, I decide to dodge him and enter the door. Looks like the armory room has been ransacked. There's still some tools over there. Might be able to make an improvised explosive and blow up the creature in the cells leading to the garage. And that, my degenerates, is how we're gonna get past that monster. So as we went on and tried to look for these specific items, let's go ahead and greet Sarah first on how she thinks of her transformation. Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, bitch. Leave me alone. My plan at first was to leave her alone like Hadley, only to find out I need the supply key, which we know Sarah has it. Bitch, you dead. After dealing with Sarah, we finally got into the supply closet and found one of the items. Afterwards, I finally managed to get all the items I need. And to be honest, I didn't even realize I had all the items. I have this tendency to mindlessly pick things up just for the sake of picking it up. So as we're ready to rock out our new explosive, Hadley had other plans. Oh, fuck. So nevertheless, with a bit of grit and timing and some lucky dodges, well, it should be easy to get around him. As much as I'd like to watch Chief Russell dying constantly, let's get to the part where we do actually dodge it and throw the explosive at the tentacle creature. Yeah, you're gonna die, you bastard! Again, with my consistent voice acting as ever, best ever. Continue towards the garage, and of course we see one of our other subordinates, I don't even know his name. But as we take this one out, he left behind a crowbar, which help us move the refrigerator. But before I proceed any further, out of my compulsive nature, I need to take out Hadley. Those things... Hadley as well. Is anyone even alive? And as we approach the dispatch room, we just have one comrade to deal with. PD, come in! It's Hadley! Anyone, please, I need help! Here, come in. This is Sheriff Russell. I'll read you. Thank God, Sheriff! You have to get out of here now! Something has gone terribly wrong here. Beaver, things have got to shit. Everyone here in the here in HQ is dead. Our turn to these grotesque monsters. But same thing happened to Max. I I don't know what's going on, but he hurt me pretty bad, and I don't know if, it's going, if I'm gonna make it, Sheriff. I'm on my way to you, Beaver. Listen carefully. Before I get to the station, I heard Ace on the radio mentioning that Teddy was back. After hearing what I hear, I don't believe he was lying. Something evil has taken root here in Oakheart. Teddy, how is that possible? Please hurry, Sheriff. Hang in there, Beaver. I'll be there soon. Though even with that reassurance on Russell's end, we can't really say the same for Beaver. Oh no, no, Teddy can't be back. It's not possible. I have to get out of here. And he dies. Yep, he just got the ripperonied. He never had a chance. Hours later, our hero Russell makes it to the campgrounds to find out if Beaver is still alive. But of course, us as the narrator, we already have that information. He's basically walking into a potential death trap. I think that says Ashley. Is that Camp Oakheart? Is that where Teddy's going? As if I did not predict that, but... Miraculously, he survives, and it looks like we gotta fight Beaver. Cue the fight music. What the hell happened to you, Beaver? Oh 
Oh, no, okay, this is a. Oh, no, 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 I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. I thought I could like crouch back because that butterfly looks like he can't crouch. Okay. It's, it's probably not this final form. The situation's getting worse. Teddy must be behind this somehow. I have to find him. He must be going after Ashley. I have to get to Camp Oakhart. After that action build sequence, we are then greeted with none other than Linda the Librarian. Even though her name is Lily, I just went with Linda instead. I need to go ahead and tell the others about the road being blocked. She heads downstairs to greet the counselors of the unfortunate news. And as you can see, every one of these counselors represent every character trope you can think of. Rose the popular girl, Noah the jock. Ethan, the one obsessed with martial arts. Jack, the depressed kid. And Ashley, the last girl. But don't worry. None of them really matters because the only one that is important here is Ashley. Because like I said, it's better to not be attached to any of these characters. Uh, don't worry, Rose. You can snuggle up and I'll keep you warm. As if Noah uh, really need to find something to do. Dying of boredom here. No sweat off my back. I can practice my sweet karate moves. I think we should all walk through the cabins as we are in charge to make sure nothing has been damaged. Don't be a buzzkill, Lily. Rose and I have a date with a six pack and a tent under the stars. Noah, shut up. We weren't supposed to tell them about that. Lee's right. Let's make sure everything's okay here at the camp. Then you'd all do whatever you want. After displaying my S-tier voice acting, we now get to control every character and bring them to their assigned area. Though you can say this is the part where they split up, even though they didn't really state it out loud. I'm gonna check the fishing supply cabin and make sure the freezer is still on. Let's see if any of this bait has gone bad. I mean, I could narrate their whole demise. I'm not gonna do that, so I decide to make a montage of their deaths. Of course, he, would, he was gonna appear right, right, right with these guys. Now, is that you? Did you grab the beer? What the hell? Let me go! Oh, oh, oh. Yep, she, she just got the salamid. Uh, and he's going at every one of them. Look at that. He's just demolishing their asses. Oh, where did that put? Where did that put a whooping? Ah! Oh God! <laughs> you just had. You should just had him do that. Oh wait. What the? Who are you? Man, you better get moving. I'm warning you. I know karate. Ah. Oh God! No, please no! Ah! He turned him into ground beef. The ga grandmama. <gasps> There's your painting. Missing the demise of every character. We are now in control of Ashley. Of course, the girl who survives is the one that will probably survive all of this. Looks like everything looks good here. I should see what the others are up to. Oh my god! Rose! Rose is a rose! Did you get it, guys? She, she got it. <laughs> it's, it's that Noah. His supply room key. I should check for any weapons. Maybe if I shoot whoever or whatever is killing all my friends, I can at least track it on the radio. Re-traumatized by the death of her acquaintances, I doubt they were friends at all, knowing very little of them. We get to the main cabin, only to find that Linda is still alive. Lily, no! Let her go now! Please help me, Ashley. <laughs> Lily's definitely not coming back from this, is she? Out of all the deaths, that is the most gruesome. Let's put that on slow-mo. 
10 out of 10 for the unexpectedness of it. What's that, Teddy? How is that possible? I killed that bastard. I don't think that dress will keep him out for long. I need to get to the radio room and the ra and radio the police. And she did just that. Unfortunately, the radio was broken and conveniently, she left a note behind and decided to make her last stand at the balcony. Just broke downstairs. He'll be here soon. I'll have only one chance. Wait, Teddy. I want you alive. Bring her to me. Crap. Can't move this collapsed tree. There's no way I'm getting out of my cruiser through this. Looks like I'm on foot from here. There's a tra hiking trail a ways back that I can take. Gonna grab some extra firepower from the trunk first. I mean, I could narrate this whole part with him hearing through everyone, but... I'm not gonna do that. We'll just go ahead and put some badass music and a couple of fancy effects. Because it's Russell, motherfucker. I need to get past this thing and check if everyone's still alive. Fuck, I didn't even scratch that thing. I'm gonna have to find another way to destroy this creature. Maybe I can find something around the campgrounds. Oh. Oh! Ah! Ah! A bitch! More parts, I might be able to piece together a homemade flamethrower and a torch to that creature blocking the entrance to the counselor's cabin. Ah! Ah, damn it! I'm gonna die. Ah, damn it. More. God damn it! God damn it! Kim Dog! Oh! Fuck. That should be the last part. I just need to find just a workbench to assemble it at all. Real tank use. Now that should do it. Range is limited, but I'll have to reload after each shot. It should pack quite a punch. Time to cook that creature block in the console's cabin. Fire! There's a note here. Rigs that Teddy came for us. We're all dead. Shot him with a tracking dart. Use the tracker to find him and make him pay. Ashley should check that tracking device in the wall right over there. Let's see. There's a ping on the screen and it's not far from here. Ashley, clever girl. I better get moving. There's no telling how long he'll stay in the same spot. After decimating every poor sod, we barely knew ya, Rose. Barely knew ya. Nevertheless, we continue our journey with Russell to find ourselves in Tiddy's mansion. Gate is rest shut. Might be able to loosen it. There. That should do it. I think this is the old Barker property. I thought it was abandoned years ago. Since where you all been hiding this time, Teddy? Every window in here on the first floor have bars and boards covered in them. It looks like a window on the second floor is broken. I could get in there if I could find a way up. Oh wait, an old ice cream truck. This must be Teddy's. It's pretty trash, but it might still run. I don't have the key though. Knowing this will be our getaway car, we commit breaking by grabbing this ladder and climbing into the second window. Only to be greeted with this madness. What the hell is this place? It's like one big trap. I guess you could say that Squid Palpatine did a number on this house. Can't reach that ladder. This. Oh. It's probably the last one over there. Oh shit. Ah, fuck, 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 fuck. Open and let us in. Ow. Ah, damn it! Hell. Don't budge. Okay, so let's go. Ah, fuck 
Go for, go for. I don't know what that, that looks like a cinnamon, a cinnamon roll. Oh god. And a pair of balls. Awesome. So give me a pack of pun. Okay, no, 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 no. Oh, I fucking god. Oh, I fucking god. Oh, I fucking god. No, no, no. Okay, so we have a caterpillar and a flower. So we uncover the last puzzle and take out any remaining monsters our way. We see none other than Teddy. Monster, you will pay for what you did to the residents of Oakard. Hey! Oh, sh dang. You can say this isn't his final form, but tentacles aside, you know the rules, degenerates. Oh, damn it. Oh, damn it. Ah. Oh, damn it. Come on, come on. After his maker had enough of our courting, he beckons him as Russell follows behind, only to see what is of Squid Palpatine and his growth. Ashley, I have to save her. Your useless flesh rag have failed me for the last time. Your flesh will not go to waste for Give me one last time, Teddy. Ah, fuck. Disgusting. Alright, you ugly son of a bitch. It's time to die. She's still breathing. With Squid Palpatine gone and Ashley unscathed, the house decides to collapse on itself as if it knew that its occupant is gone. Oh sh what's going on? Time to get out of here. As they drive off, we get a monologue from Russell himself. Barely got out of that hellhole of my life. There's no telling how much of Oakheart was infested by Teddy and that monster. Ace, Hadley, Sarah, and so many others died tonight. I couldn't save them. At least I saved her. Ashley, we're safe now. The nightmare is finally over. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Like any other 80s flick, we're left with a cliffhanger, craving for more. But it was enough to sate my love for such an era. Overall, as the narrator, I'm only left to question, where shall I go next, my fellow viewer? 
do comment below what else I should reincarnate as, as in another game, in case you were confused if I can actually reincarnate. Or in the meantime, if you like getting stuck in loops like a stepsis getting stuck in a washer, I do recommend checking this vid out.